I got a problem. It is a problem that everyone has whenever they have a really big Minecraft world, such as me. This episode, this is going to be a rather different, so to say, exciting. But first, I got a problem to show you. The first problem is this. As you can see that throughout my time in the in the series, uh, I spent a lot of time in the industrial district and I spent a lot of time in the Alchemist Empire as well. I hardly even spent so long in the starter house over here. You know, as you guys don't know, this is my starter house. But yeah, how many times have you seen me went into that house over here? Yeah, hardly. And all of my storage, my resources are all over here, just basically creating what essentially everyone would call a chess monster. Yes, that's right. Look at all these chess monsters that I got with all this junk in me. And you know what? That's the problem. That's the main problem. I literally don't have anywhere that I can put this chest master in. I could just put it in here, but this will still consider a chest master because this is not supposed to be here. In fact, I want to get rid of this place as soon as possible. But yeah, as you can see, it's quite uh like. I spent a lot of time just trying to just scroll through every single one of the chests and see like what uh trying to get the items I need and yeah this is definitely going to be a really big mess. But into the episode, yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of planning, but before that, there is an elephant at hand that we need to take care of. As you all may know, the elephant in hand is this moss farm over here. In the last episode, I mentioned that we are going to finally build the best, I mean the better version of moss farm. And we're gonna build it right down here, over here. I already did other places, but yeah, we are definitely going to build the moss farm because I am running out of moss and I need more moss for a future project. And as you can see, yeah, I only have this left. It's not a lot. So we definitely need to change that. We definitely need to change and we definitely need to build it. This is all from the, from the mining, so yeah. I uh, definitely need to move, uh, move this whole thing as well. But yeah, so... Oh, by the way, I found this parrot over here. Now, let me just tell you a quick story about how I found this parrot. I found this parrot by the pool right over here and I found him while I was gathering the lava bucket I found him right over here just sitting like lying on the edges of this stone block over here ow, 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 ow. <laughs> you <laughs> um yeah okay as I was saying yeah if I push the parrot down just a little bit more, it will definitely caught in fire. Oh my god. Thankfully the zombie didn't push me down into the, the lava. That would be the end of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So yeah, I tamed the parrot and now he is safe and sound over here with the followers, the little doggy with the kid. Nom nom nom. It's so delicious. So yeah, I found this parrot. Now, I know I already uh, asked you guys in the comment what uh, uh, the names that you should give for the villagers, but I mean, why not just keep doing that, you know? Sorry about that, that was the, the desktop. Uh, why don't you just keep doing that? Why don't you guys just come up with a name for this parrot over here? So, yeah, I can name this parrot. I could name it by myself, but you know, it's always fun when you guys suggest a really fun name for the, 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 the the name for villagers or animals or whatever it is but yeah moving on to that i have been gathering some resources in between the episodes and i have gathered all of the resources that i need necessary for the moss farm over there so hopefully this is all enough with the build that i'm going to work on for the moss so let's just bring them all over and just let her head straight to the to the let's just head straight down into the bottom part of this moss farm now, 
One thing I'm unsure about this is I don't know if I want to actually do this in the form of time lapse or just do it as a full recording. Sorry, my notification is really noisy right now today. But yeah, I realize I've been doing a lot of time lapse recently, so I figure I should try to do something different. So, I mean, it's always fun to try to do redstone in cameras with you guys. So, I suppose it is perfect for us to, you know, just just do this together and see whether i made any mistake clearly not i'm smart i built this custom design clearly i know what, uh, what i'm doing so <laughs> we will see about that but for this first let's just get some blocks so the first thing first we need to know where is the center is and this is gonna be the center of the the area over here this is all 25 by 25 uh size and the, this is going to be where all the items gonna fall down to the center but this block it's also going to be the block that no water or anything can convert into uh, the stone. So basically, what we need to do, oops, I got the beacon. We need to create four modules on each side over here. One on this side, one on this side, one on this side, and one on this side. Basically, it's like a, a cross in on the other side, and it meets on the center. The center is definitely going to be a, a, an empty hole. So. Yeah, let us quickly build up the stone generator over here. And we also need to make sure the piston or the lava, the stone generator, can only reach up to 12. But we can technically reduce that by putting obs uh, obsidians over here, maybe something around here, so that the stone generator is not going to push any further than that. So, the first step is done. We got ourselves a stone generator on four side right over here. Now, I also need to make sure that I actually count this right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this is going to be 7 block. The 7 block is going to be the water and the stone generator is going to be located over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. Okay. Everything is right. Imagine if I um, screw that up. Couldn't be me, right? That definitely did not happen. Heh <laughs> You don't you definitely do not want to see the suffer I have to go through this. You know, I may be able to redesign something in creative world and make it work, but there's a good chance that I might not be able to recreate everything in this exact same order in survival because I literally do not have the same uh, I don't have a good memory, so there's a good chance I'm gonna mess a lot of stuff up. So hopefully that's not gonna happen, but we'll see. We'll see. So the next step we need to do is to put down the redstone on all four sides of here and make sure that all four of them meet the centers and yeah we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> Definitely not gonna, nothing bad is gonna happen. This is a temporal measurement but I just want to see whether uh, uh, all this stone generator works. But I just wire up the redstone with repeaters all around so uh, all of them should be pushed towards the center over here so we will see how it goes hopefully nothing bad is going to happen so we push the lever and going back okay everything is fine so let's just keep doing this hopefully no cobblestone is going to generate there's a cobblestone over here and it should be fine so now that we made the stone generator all fully functional, all we need to do now is we need to place the moss on this four spot over here, two blocks away from the hold, and then we need to make sure this is all empty from the uh, below of the moss. But yeah, we also need a place so that we can bone mill the ball. So what you need to do now, dispenser on the side of this block is the only facing downward like this, run three hopper lines right towards uh, this part over here like this so a block on the top of here and another block over here and like this facing uh, doing facing this way so now all uh, four module of the bone meal moss modificator is now placed like this the next thing we need to do now is to mark this four corner over here with glass it's not necessary but it's gonna be helpful for you guys to understand why in a moment this glass is essentially where we're gonna drop down water over here and then all of the items that land from here will be sent into the centers so with this four uh, glass over here all four of the waters will drop 
and then yeah, every, every, all of the items will land on the centers. With all of the water here installed on all four corners, I'm gonna try to test and see whether the water actually flow as intended and head to the, the direction we want to. So let's open all of the water source. All right, and as you can see, if we land down here or just if we just drop any items, yeah, you know what? This is actually what I was afraid that's gonna happen. The items kind of stack around this spot over here. Having that said, that apart from that, this issue over here, most of the items should be able to land at the center over here. So, yeah. And according to my creative world, this is exactly how I designed it. And you see all those items that land over here? That's because as the water starts to stop going, the item also move around. So. Yeah, it will eventually head to the center over here. So I don't think we, should, uh, we have anything to worry about the, uh, losing any item because eventually uh, there's going to be a quick take of waters and then all of the items that like, get stuck over here will push to the center, slowly towards the center. So yeah, I think we are all set to go with this. So the next thing that we need to do now is to find a way to activate the system over here. It's not fully complete yet, but we need something to get started so that we know what we're doing, dealing with next. But this design is technically from Sugarcraft, so you guys can go check him out with this design. Basically, what you need to do is to place a piece, uh, block over here with a uh, place three block like this, and then one uh, facing this way. Actually, no, that's wrong. Uh, something just like in this. So once this piston went in, when you activate it, this will send a signal, and it would basically create a loop around. With four ticks, four ticks, four ticks, and three ticks. This is uh, essentially uh, how it activates the stone generator, and it basically helps to prevent creating a cobblestone generator. But like I said before, it could be really well uh, be the lag that will cause the stone generator to uh, generate cobblestone as well. But hopefully, with this design over here, it's not gonna create anything. But yeah, once you've done this, and then you activate this. Then you can see that it basically creates a loopy loop like this and then yeah we're gonna basically bring this redstone signal to uh, all of the cobblestone generator over here but we can't do that just yet mainly because if we take a look at this this is going to essentially activate this uh, signal over here and also it also push this signal uh, uh, over here as well but that's not really the uh, the huge matter. The problem is this: the water. We need a way that so that every once uh three times this bone mill activates, only then uh, this thing will trigger and push all of the items to the centers. We don't want this to activate all the time. So I have come up with something that you know I showed you guys in the video before, introducing the clock system. Now, if you guys didn't know, the clock system is basically actually not a clock, but more so it's like a eat the hopper clock where it tells based on how many items are in the dropper, for example. And in this dropper, there's three wooden sword. And over here, we also got three wooden sword in the hopper, and our comparator is comparing the, the signal strength over here. Hence, if anything, let's say if we uh, put one wooden sword in here, it's not going to activate the system because this signal is stronger, hence locking the comparator. But if we do it two more times, like one time and then two more time, then you can see it's basically triggering the system and creating a short pulse for allowing the, the water to, uh, to activate and drop the water down for a short distance. And then this thing will reset back to like normal again and hence that uh, you can uh, Resetting the system and trigger it, trigger it again. So yeah, I'm trying to explain and I'm really bad at explaining. I hope you guys uh, can catch it up right now, but yeah. So we basically need to do this another, uh, triple times on the other side of the corner as well. So after a while of building, I have finally done it over here. All four modules are all primed with red stones. The only thing that I haven't put in yet is the bone mill over here. Now technically, I could do it now and let's see whether this whole machine works or not. But I have full confidence that it's gonna work anyway, so I'm not gonna do this just yet. 
Mainly because if we do happen to work, we then have an issue that all of the items gonna fall down here and then just sit over here waiting for it to despawn. So if, if it, in any case that it works, then I need to have a place to store them. So we're gonna have to put like drop all of the items down to the center and then it's gonna flow all the way down to here this is going to be a storage room for the industrial district in the future so yeah i think what i want to do first is basically i'm gonna make a miniature storage room like right over here right uh, down in this tunnel over here but first thing first I think what I want is uh, all of the items that drop over here is gonna get converted into bone meal first and once we are full of bone meal only then any of the extra moss that we get is gonna go down to you know as, as a miniature sorting system over here so yeah having that say I do have a sorting system uh, down over here over here over here over here <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tear this all down and then just basically move everything down to that location over here So just give me a moment, I'll do this and then we can just test it out and see whether it works or not The sorting system are now primed and installed, it is really right below me If we take a look at it using the free cam, you can see, yeah, the first five of the the hopper is going to be composted and turned into bone meal over here And then the rest that went through here we set, get sent down into the, the actual sorting system so i'm gonna have three moss blocks as usual and one for the the bushes and one for the flower as they are so yeah i think with this all set up now i think it's time for us to actually test out the machine over there and put all the bombing in and then yeah we'll see hopefully finger crossed that no couple stone is gonna generate it but we will see about that because like i said before in the previous episode that this machine still have a chance to break uh depending on the the server lag or something like of those sorts so yeah but finger cross it's not gonna be too common but yeah the bone mills are in uh the machines are ready i set up the repeater and everything so everything should be working yeah, let's just hope that... Let me just do a quick double check and make sure all of the dropper here are on the same order. Okay, everything's like on, like everything's right. So, when I pull this lever, is it that everything's gonna go south or everything's gonna go wonderfully? <laughs> so, uh, 3, 2, 1, go! I want to see. Oh no. This is not working out oh, because I don't have the redstone torches here. So I forgot to place a redstone torch here apparently and that kind of made, thing, made everything out of order. So yeah, let me just do some double check again and see. Like, Hopefully it works well this time. I did notice that the cobblestone did generate, but I don't know. We do I do need to keep doing more checking and see just how bad is it. Test number two. Let's pull the lever and see whether everything works normal. Okay, so after a bit of checking, it seems that everything starts to go pretty good. I don't see any cobblestone forming. So we might be onto something over here. Now I don't always trust that the stone generator is not gonna generate any cobblestone but for the time being. Yeah, everything seems to be fine. So let's just head down to the sorting system because I wanna see how uh, how well that's doing. I have made a, a ladder down here that I can go down and check on the sorting system. So let's just take a look at that and see the situation. And see whether we got anything. Yes, we did. Take a look at this. We are getting getting some moss block over here. So yeah, everything looks really nice so far. But yeah, just as I expect, we are still getting a lot more of the moss and I think oh wait I think I know why 
I can't I can't compose anything if this is like facing on the side. Okay. L I need to fix that. Hold on, let me stop the machine. Okay, so I have fixed the compost over here and now everything it seems to be working fully functional now. However, it seems that I still have some concern because I just realized because what we are filtering right now is basically we got three moss block filtering over here and then one azalea and one flowering azalea. But you can see where the problem is. If any of the carpet, the moss carpet and the seeds went through the system, it's still going to get stuck here in the end over here. So I think I might just have a, an extra compost over here just to fit out all, all sort of the the excesses uh, item that we received so yeah i'm gonna have uh two more modules of the composter just right over here in case if anything just went past over here that sounds like a good idea all right so basically i have pretty much done everything that i need to do over here I think what I need to do now is basically I just need to AFK here for an hour and see if everything here is still doing functional and fine and without generating any cobblestone at all. But, how about I say, I do also need to do one last test once I AFK here for an hour is, and that is whether this machine will break we go out of render distance. Because if you remember, in the last, last episode when we did the test on creative, Whenever we go out to render this turn and come back, this thing is still functioning really fine. But things can stay differently when we're doing it in survival world. So yeah, we probably need to do that stress test in this world and see whether it works over here as well. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna FK for an hour and see whether this machine breaks or not. So yeah, I'll see you guys in an hour. So I haven't been AFK for an hour mainly because the bone meals in the dispenser are all ran out. So yeah, that's that. But on top of that, it seems like after a while, yeah, there's no signs of cobblestone anyway. Seems like this thing is really working really well. But I would say let's head down here into the storage and see just how much of the resources that we gather from that one session. Let's take a look at the bone mill first. So in that, we got about... So in that one session, we got about this amount. And to me, this is way less than... Like, how do I say this? So basically, we got four modules of the bone mill thingy. And in that four module, there's nine slot, and this is the the comeback, the payback that we got. It's definitely not, no, it's definitely not enough to sustain the farm. That's for sure. So we might need to do some adjustment on that. And I think, I think I know what to do with this. But for now, let's just check just how much. Uh, of the other stuff that we got from over here it seems like yeah i mean it's not doing too bad we got a, a fair bit of moss but not too much for bone meal so we definitely need to do some changes so rather than having it uh trigger the water every uh i don't know uh, every three times maybe just do it once every trigger of the moss maybe that will help I suppose so let's just do that and see if it helps improving the the quality a little bit now we don't have a lot of bone meal in the uh, dispenser this time because you know i technically run out of uh, bone meal now so this we have to make do but i'm just gonna try to make uh, do some more uh intensive uh intensive what's the word that i need to come out with the uh, intense intensive uh Break, come on, think, think, intensive, testing. Why is it so difficult for me to, to literally think about that word? Anyway, yes, I need to do some intensive. Uh, you know what? I give up. You guys have no idea just how long have I been tinkering and tinkering with this moss farm for three hours straight. Look at me. Oh, it's took so long trying to fix this man machine. <laughs>
It all started with the bow mill being overused. So I decided to make some changes, but then I gradually I just lose it more and more. The proper just lose more and more. But yeah, we have finally, after a while, we have finally fixed it. And I have made it possible that no cobblestone is gonna generate in the stone generator. Most of the problem that I encounter right now is this the stone generator. Somehow, even with just this amount of length over here, the stone the stone generator is still able to generate some cobblestone. And I found out the reason why. Occasionally, it doesn't matter how many times you try to adjust the repeater, whether it's uh, long or slow or how, how much you delay it. It really doesn't matter because as soon when this piston pushes uh, the stone over, the lava just immediately went down to the, the block before the water ever would to reach it. So the cobblestone we able to uh, generate no matter what. Secondly, even if uh, I fix that, even if sometimes that's not a problem, for some reason, weirdly enough, like the cobblestone generator, like one part of it doesn't work even though there is moss over here, which allowed them to push, but they didn't. So instead what I did is, I have placed down another piston right below here. I moved the, 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 the water down. Let me if I can adjust it. So. Over here, you can see the uh, stairs of it. This is the stairs uh, with water lock uh, waters. So underneath here, this is the piston. You can see the repeater here. So once the piston push up the stone over here, and this thing will push the stone outward. Hence, now we got the lava needs to go down two blocks before it generates uh, the stones. Instead, before then, it literally uh, generates the, the stone almost immediately. And we don't want that. We want to uh, make sure all of the lava can generate stone no matter what without breaking the thing and also we need to make sure the water can fill up on, on the bottom part before the lava flows down so yeah that is the only way that i can fix the most fun without having any issues over here but yeah but let's say i have reduced the module you can see it used to be four module but now i reduced to two module because i feel like this is uh good enough to basically just convert pretty much like all of the the stone over here into more so yeah and it's cost efficient i don't think it's gonna cost too much and then yeah and then this is the 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 uh it's basically the start of it let me just put this right now and as you can see it's pretty much gonna run this uh this piston about every one and a half or two seconds and then as you can see, I also removed the clocking system on all four sides of the corner over here because uh, I also realized that uh, while this uh, machine is moving, I realized that everything is uh, working at the same time. As for example, the water, while the water is flowing, the dispenser will also dispense the moss, uh, the bomb with the moss. And it's kind of wasting it because it's not actually like bombing the stone while the water is, is in the way. So instead, what I've done is I've made a T flip flop over here. So every three times this thing triggers, it will trigger this T flip flop. So this thing will trigger the moss first before it triggers the water. So you can see there's a redstone torch over here. So it basically refers to the signal. Hence the reason why that everything should work exactly as it should intended. So yeah, but the only minor adjustment that I need to do now is as you can see the block over here is not really exactly flow to the center. So that, that is not a huge deal for me to do it. I just have to do uh, fix this off camera and then yeah. But I mean, everything should, should work by now. It's just a, a minimal loss of uh, moss that I need to fix on. But yeah, I will say, ah, uh, yeah. Um, let me just say this right now. I never want to make a build another moss farm anymore because I spent so long trying to fix this moss, uh, moss machine and I never want to touch it ever again. <laughs> yeah. So, I will say, now that that's done, let's move on to the next part of this video, shall we? Uh, I'm so tired. I hate this machine. So, so much. A lot. 
So, coming back to this matter at hand, I said in the beginning that, yeah, this is quite my storage system. And, yeah, I don't want to be like, I don't want the chest mounted to grow much and much and much more than that. And considering we're gonna build more farm in the future, so we definitely going to have more resources that we can put in anywhere. And like I said before, we cannot put it into the houses mainly because that house is too small and it's a starter house so it is finally the time that we should find new locations and call ourselves a future base a permanent base so to say and so having that said i'm going to build myself a whiteboard so that we can des uh, design ourselves a roadmap on what to do in order to get ourselves a future basis okay so I got myself a whiteboard, but I don't know what to put in it here yet because we first, our first thing that we need to do is to find ourselves a location to call ourselves a future permanent basis. And so we're coming here at the World Seed Maker, maybe because I want to show you our current situation. So. As you can see, this is where I live right now, this location, this is a starter base. And then recently, we built ourselves the Alchemist Empire just right over here on this villager icon, if you see it over here. And then over here, this is the industrial district, and this is going to be the future librarian empire right over here with this savannah. And then if we zoom out a little bit, you can see that a few more village town just near where we are at the spawn and then at the middle over here this is going to be the how do i say this warrior empire with the people that uh, trade for armor and weapons yeah those people will live in this empire over here and then this is going to be the farmer empire and then this is going to be the sorry this is going to be the geography empire i'm not exactly sure what i'm gonna name uh, this kind of empire but yeah so far this is kind of my plan but what about my, my future basis you may ask well my basis is not going to be anywhere where the uh, village is gonna be and also nowhere near any of the ocean or river is going to be the location that I pick up for my future base is just right that straight down to this location over here. This giant large hills or lands is where I'm going to call myself a future permanent base. And as you can see, it's located right at the forest. So if we go back to Minecraft right now, I am currently in the creative world of my Exodia world where I design all of the build first before I bring into survival. So everything you see here is done before I uh, have finished the, the empire over here. So you can see there's, there's no mushroom, there's no decoration, nothing whatsoever. This is way before then. And as you can see, the cliff is not done as well, which I already finished by the way. So yeah yeah it's me but yeah from over here this is my starter uh starter base and if we head, keep heading up towards south over here all the way to a, a 1600 blocks if i'm not mistaken we just have to keep going this direction by the way i am well known by the fact that i haven't really exactly tell you guys what kind of future permanent base that i'm going to work with well i'm going to tell you guys now so, uh, I tried to make myself a castle last time, and it didn't end well. And this time, I kind of want to t uh, tackle with trying to design a castle build again. And yes, it is going to be a mega base. It's going to be, the, the build itself is going to be super big. So yeah, this time, I'm trying to be smart and I'm trying to design the, the structure of the castle first before I actually, uh, it into survival that's why it will be much more easier for me to design it in survival without making any dumb mistake like i did in the, the previous series so yeah over here uh, what i'm about to show you is just a schematic of what the future base is gonna be so ladies and gentlemen welcome to our future exodia bases 
take a look at this. Like I say, this is a schematic, so there's a lot of messes going on. But let's just start out a little bit by little bit. So where I'm walking right now, this is going to be the future large bridges that go across the hills from the other side to the other side over here. And then yeah, there's a, like a almost like a large ravine over here, which technically isn't called a ravine, but yeah. But it looks nice and I'm gonna build a bridge here uh, soon. But if we come over here, eventually there's gonna be a wall in between uh, this gap over here. And then yeah, this is gonna be the large walkway to our future castle. Take a look at this. As in this look majestic as well. Yeah. I spent for the past few days just trying to design on the, the layout of the castle and trying to make sure that I know exactly how I want my castle to look like. So far, yeah, this is what I, uh, it looks like. So the first we created by the staircase over here. This is going to be a large staircase covered by a statue which is going to be sitting over here at the center of it. But once you go up to the staircase, this is going to be the big central hall that you enter and then there's going to be multiple roads that you can go. Right now there's going to be a, a one road over here that leads to the other part of the castle. But I'm planning to have a, a few more roads that go to a different place which I haven't really decided on what to do yet. But yeah, before on to that, uh, if we go over here, this is going to be a, 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 a flat platform eventually. We are greeted by two staircases over here, one that goes up and one that goes down. Now, you guys have heard me complain about the storage so far, so I'm going to show you where I'm going to uh, put my storage system. So we're going to go down here, this is going to go down the staircase, and then there's going to be a hallways over here, and then this is going to be where our future storage is going to be. Initially, I was supposed to design a storage system right over here in Gravity, but uh, I haven't really figured it out yet, so I still need to do some more planning over here, but yeah. So this area over here is going to be where our future storage system is going to be. However, if we go up here, this is going to uh, meet up with the second floor over here, and then this is going to be the hall where they'll go either that side or that side. Uh, currently, I have figured out a way, uh, a, or at least the purpose for the second floor, and this leads to the other part of the uh, second floor, which is the garden area. This is going to be the floor gardens. Um, what I'm going to put here is still on the center. I know for a fact that I'm going to put uh, garden related stuff. However, I'm also going to put something which I'm going to tell you guys in the moment later on after this. But yeah. There's going to be a tower over here, which also leads up to the second floor over here as well. And then, yeah, there's going to be a staircase over here. And then I'm planning to decide whether I want to have an entrance somewhere around here as well, connecting to uh, that part of the, the floor over here. But so far, the next step I have kind of planned to do is like have a staircase that leads up to the third floor, which I haven't uh, made yet. But yeah, the third floor is going to be where the throne room is going to be. So this is going to be the entrance to the throne room. And it's, as you can see, there's already a throne over here waiting for me to uh, design on it. And yeah, I'm just trying to lay out uh, the length and the size of it. If you see the black and white wall, this is just me trying to count how many blocks I need to uh, build apart for this castle. So yeah, this is, I, I believe this is a 30 to 40 blocks high. And then I believe this is going to be the fourth floor. It's not done by the way. This is just like a half, half of the progress done for this schematic itself. There's still so much more that I need to do. There's still so much more I need to design over here. I believe there's going to be five floors total, including the bases, I think. I don't know, like I say, I need to do a lot of that, uh, building, I need to do a lot of planning, but yeah, so far, this is how it's gonna look like. Now, I know this is just a schematic, but what about the build palette? So, if you guys have already noticed, I have already laid out a few palettes over here, 
right on the side of the here. And I come up with three, three of them. First of all, I come up with the, this palette over here. I mean, with the uh, blue terracotta, with the purple terracottas, and then coming up with strip, crimson hyphae, mangrove wood, acacia, concrete, yellow uh, terracotta, then birch. Sort of give off the like uh, blue fire uh, gradient over there. And at first, I thought. It was. It looks kind of good, but then after thinking about it, uh, the contrast it doesn't really blend well all together. Mainly because, like, uh, especially the orange terracotta and the uh, what is it, the acacia one, the contrast is a little bit too like hard, harsh, so to say. So I scratched on that idea, and then I came up with this one. So this time I went with, with the same uh, kind of design, except mixing a bit more purple with magenta and purple terracotta on the top so that give off the much more well blend uh, gradient over there but then I realized that I've been doing gradient for so long I want to try something different so in the end I ended up hitting up with this design over here you can see this large design over here this is where I'm trying to design like a sort of like a brick texture if we take a brick uh, out right now so sort of like just like this where it's, it got like a horizontal line on each line and each of them so I have a different gradient of textures over here so I basically did the same thing over here except right now I know it looks like a mess from close time if, if we go quite far away from the distance it gradually looks like an actual brick formation over there and it looks amazing especially with the gradient over here I feel like this is gonna be really really work out at all times and as you can see I also try to uh, implement with some of the prismarine over here and some copper for the the roof over there and the you know the accents of it so yeah but now that you guys have already known that I'm going to land on this color palette there is now a problem because you can see I don't have a, a guardian farm for the prismarine and uh, the terracotta, the concrete is probably going to be difficult it's not so difficult compared to the terracotta one so yeah and then I need a substantial amount of copper so there are a few farms that we need to build before we can actually start building the mega castle behind me but yeah now that we know what to do let's head back to our survival world and build out the roadmap on what step we should take on uh, before taking care of the mega castles so coming back to the survival world i have listed out three phases over here so the first thing first what do we need to do on the phase one? Well, coming back to this world, I realized there's still so much more things that I need to do, especially in the starter base. I mentioned that I'm going to do more work over here in the starter base. I'm going to do some hotel for me. I'm going to need to finish up the industrial district over here. And then, yeah, you can see so much more terraforming I need to do. So the first thing first, in the first way, we need to finish off all of our current existing project which is finish off the starter base over here and then we also need to finish the industrial district once we've uh, done this both stuff then we can move on to uh, building the, the other stuff that we need to do which is build industrial sorting system that I mentioned that we're gonna do that in the future so we definitely need to do, do that in phase one and then lastly we also need to build ourselves a spawn protection. Now, if you guys don't know what spawn protection is, this is where we started our, our first ever series in this spawn location over here. This is where we spawn over here, and then we don't need to make sure this is basically protected without having any, any mob trying to kill you as well. So I want to build something over here which will protect me and then we also need to, uh, to get a way to to navigate from one uh, that place over here to that place over here which is where you can see as you notice I have cleared out the forest over here and if we look directly to that one 
you guys may have already guessed what I'm going to do with that stuff over here. So, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it that, uh, off as that. But having that said, once we finish all of this four stuff over here, which we highlighted by, uh, with green dye, by the way, if we ever finish it, we move on to phase two, and that is this six farm right over here. So, you guys already know that I'm going to build a copper farm and the prismarine farm over here. But I haven't really mentioned that I'm also going to build a red farm, gold farm, well, like farm, and a wither rose farm. And I'm going to explain to you guys why we need this farm for the castle itself. And that is because I don't really need these two as a main priority. We also need a red farm to make sure we can sustain ourselves large amount of emeralds so that we can trade with the villagers, with especially with the mason villagers, for a large quantity of blocks that we need to build the interiors of the castle itself. Because I'm highly sure that we're going to need to use some bricks and some other terracotta or concrete uh, with the build. So having a village, the mason village is going to be highly necessary to uh, uh, building the rate farm and make it so much easier for me to gather a lot of resources from the villagers so yeah it's definitely a must but moving on to that we need to sleep we got ourselves a gold farm now like i said i'm pretty sure i'm gonna need to use gold in some way for the build itself so it'd be nice if we got ourselves a gold farm so that they can use the glow as an accent or decorative of the build itself because why not it's castle. You're gonna need to have a, a, a nice and shiny gold trim for your build, right? So yeah, definitely go fun is a must for this project over here. And then not only that, for light farm. Because the more uh, variants of light, the better. I know by building the the, the prismarine farm, we can also get ourselves sea lantern as well. But who to say that I can get more different type of uh, light sources so yeah we definitely should try to do it and try to implement some flock like light to the to the build itself and then finally we got ourselves a wither rose farm now i know this one probably doesn't make so much sense for you guys but it will make so much sense when i tell you guys that the reason why i need with the rose farm is because currently there isn't a way for me to get a black dye now i know you can build black dye by farming from the squid itself by killing squid and get the ink and then get black dye but you know in my experience i do not want to do that many because i've tried to build myself squid farm before and not only uh i tried to build myself a squid farm before and it was difficult and all it drops is just ink i know you can do uh, a, a fair few with uh, ink but if we build a Wither Rose Farm, I'm sure we can have much more use in that and we can also make it into the Black Tie. So yeah, I think it would be nice if we just uh, do this one instead. So we don't have to um, make any mistake trying to build the Squid Farm. So yeah, I mean it's just make me make me excuses. Don't judge. Don't judge. No, no, no. And then finally on the final phases, this is the three things that we're gonna do. First thing first, we need to update this world into 1.20. Currently, we are running in 1.90.2. And I know uh, 1.20 is going to come out in a week. And I know I can just update it once it's out. But I can't do that. Because the reason uh, I can't do that is because there are a lot of mods and uh, vanilla twists I'm currently using that need to get updated to 1.20 first before I can update uh, this whole world in Super Bowl 20. So, we probably need to wait um, a few more months before we can actually update this world in Super Bowl 20. Not only that, we also need the shaders to update as well and everything else. I also need to uh, add a few more mods that will help me essentially make the the grind much more easier and especially in designing the castle itself. I'll explain in a moment. But yeah, moving on to that, we also need to grind ourselves some resources. You guys have already seen uh, the scale of the castle itself, but I haven't really truly tell you just how much resources it needs in order to build that one castle alone. How do I really explain this? 
if I finish the whole schematic of the cancer, let's say I'm gonna use a uh, copper as a uh, the uh, one of the blocks I need to place for the castle itself. I will probably need about twenty sugar boxes of copper. You're right, <laughs> and that's just one accent. And you guys have already seen the rest of the accents. I got purple terracotta, green terracotta, yellow terracotta, and I need each of them to have at least twenty sugar boxes of each of the the blocks. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a lot of crimes. However, let's say we do also means that we're gonna need to include in this part as us going to do some end rate and get some more sugar shells so that we can store all those resources into the sugar boxes. So yeah, it's definitely going to be a huge, huge grinding process. But in the end, once we've done all that, we will finally able to build the castle itself. Now, I can't guarantee we were able to finish building the castle in one whole episode because I need to take a break every now and then. So, maybe I'll split it in two or three, or if I'm really, really passionate about it, then I probably will be able to do it in one episode. But have that say, yeah, this is now going to be the roadmap from phase one to the final phase before we can finally begin to build the castle. So if you think we can start building the castle right now, nope, we are not. We are never going. To, we, we're, we're not going to do that in a while because we got a whole list of things that we need to do beforehand. So if I was to guess, it would probably take about twenty more episodes <laughs> before we actually start building this castle itself. So bear with me. Bear with me. It will all be worth it. Just stay with me, and I hope that I can keep you guys company and entertain with all this farm that I have over here. But however, let's say now that you guys know the roadmap itself, I do hope that you guys will uh, enjoy you know, what's to come in the future and so on. I will say that it will not 100% sure that I will be following based on this commander because I. You know, uh, as, uh, like I said before, every once in a while I want to take a break, so we might do something that's totally unrelated to this roadmap. But yeah, we'll see. You will see. So, yeah, this is all of these uh, roadmap over here, and I hope you guys are excited uh, for what to come. But however, that say, this is going to be where I'm ending this episode because I've been talking for so much and this is going to be a talky 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 episode. This is where I intended to be and I hope you guys enjoy it even though we haven't had much content apart from fixing and screwing up the moss farm so many times. But yeah, I can guarantee you that in the next episode we will try to finish the first part of this list of you. At least we can try to check off one of the lists over here. So yeah, have that say. My name is Robin Ken, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Have fun. See ya. Toki 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 toki. This is going to be the outro, and then 